In this video, let's take a look at how we can add um, power-ups to our game. And actually, rather than calling them power-ups, I'm going to just call them items because uh, you may want to invent um, items that um, have an adverse reaction or effect on a player rather than a positive effect. So uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make items that modify some kind of a player attribute. Okay, so that's, that's in general what they're going to do. So in this video, what we'll do is we'll make a, um, an item that makes a player move faster um, if they get it. So we'll just change, the, we'll, we'll have an item that changes the player speed from five to 10. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's, let's just get some power-ups in the game. So I'm just gonna take one of these classes that we have and duplicate it. And I'm gonna call this a speed boost. Okay, so same stuff as before. And I'm gonna make, let's see, I think I made a new color already. Um, yeah, I've, I, I added a purple color here so we can distinguish it from other objects in the game. And so let's go ahead and put a power up into the game. So I'm going to go into the start function for the game class and do item one. I'll do I1 equals and do speed boost. And I'm just kind of guessing coordinates here. So I'm just going to put it at uh, 500, 150. And we'll make it 25 by 25 and make it purple. So let's make an items group. So I'll copy that. And then we'll just say self.items.add and put the item in. And, you know, this item happens to be a speed boost, but just... Um, as you invent your own things, I want you to understand that um, we don't need to make a new items group for every type of item we have. You know, even if the items have different effects on the player, if we design them all using the same pattern, we can put all of the different items into the same um, sprite group. So it should be really reasonably easy. All right, so now we got the items in a group. Let's get them drawn on the screen. So we'll go in here and we'll say self items draw on the screen and make sure it's there okay so there we have the item um and if i play the game right now nothing happens so the first thing we want to do is just see if we can get the player to um, actually pick up the item so all right so i get actually first we got to go into the update section of the game and the player need the players need to know about the items so i'm just going to add self.items to this list of things that the, the uh, player is processing um, every time it updates. And we'll go up here to the player's update function. Right, so I'm in the player class now. Okay. In the player class. And I'm going to go to the update function and prepare it to accept an items group. And just like everything else, well, um, I'm going to make a function called check items. It takes an item sprite group to process. I'll just put that past there for now. And we'll go down here and I'll say self dot check items. All right. Um, so now. In here, we just need to make, right, we, we, I guess we've got to do two things. One is we've got to find out what items the player um, touches, and then we have to have the item act on the player. So first, let's just see if we can get the player to collide with the item. So I'm going to take that line right there that does the collision, and I'll just change this to items. And I'm going to do one more thing, okay? We've had this argument false here, and I haven't really talked about why it's there, but I'm going to flip it to true. And let's watch what happens when I play the game now. So notice how when I touch flag or when I touch walls, right, nothing happens to the wall. When I touch the goals, they stay there. Um, but when I touch this item, we made it disappear. Um, whereas when I touch other things, e even flags, they don't disappear. So um, this argument, false, whether it's false or true, right, if it's false, um, what it does is any goal that is in this 
collision list um, does not get removed from the goal sprite group. But when you put true here, right, any any object in the items list that collides with self, in this case, the player, um, will get removed from the sprite group. And so therefore, it no longer is going to get drawn on the screen and it's no longer going to get checked, right? So this is make the item, you know, make the object, make the object disappear, um, remove it from the, remove it from the game once the, a collision occurs. All right. So so now we have that taken care of. Let me fix my indentation. Um, so now we need to actually make the item do something to the player. Right. And we said what we want to do is just take the item and have it modify the player's speed attribute. So I'm going to go down to my item. And I'm going to add another function called apply that takes a player object as an argument. And so, so now, now that the player object is getting passed in, all we have to do is think about what, what attribute of this player do we want to modify. So I'm just going to say player.speed is equal to 10. And so this will change the player's speed from 5 to 10. And so now we just need to get this apply function called. And so remember, the apply function is expecting a player argument to get passed in. So I'm going to go to my check items section, and I'll say for item and hits. And then I'll say item, and I'll call the apply function on the item. And we are the item is expecting a player object to get passed in. We are in the player class right now, so we can pass, the player can pass itself in like this. And so let's test it out and find out if it works. So the player seems to be moving around at normal speed and got the item. And now you can see, right, now you can see that we are moving right much faster. Um, you know, we and th there might be some things you want to do in here. We, we might want to like in the check enemies, who knows, maybe you want to reset the speed back to, you know, when the player gets reset, maybe you want to change its speed back to five or something like that. That's a possibility. Uh, something we'll look at in another video is how can we make, make items that have timed effects um, but this should be good to help you make your own items and, you know, keep in mind, you know, as long as all items follow the same template, they have an apply function that if they have an apply function that accepts a player object, right? This code here can modify any player attributes and, um, you, they can all get put in the exact same item list, um, because they, because they work the same way. Anyway, I hope this is helpful and, uh, hope you have some fun ideas to play around with. All right, I'll end the video here.